sink. Okay, so I want to disclose at the beginning of this video that I'm not currently a Christian. Um, I was until I was about 14. I believed in the Christian God. I always went to Christian schools. My secondary school even had a massive crucifix at the front of it. Um, I went to Scouts, which is a religious organisation, and I went to church with them. And the vicar even came around my house once. My family are the kind of people who say, oh yeah, I'm Christian, but they don't really know what the Bible says. I was about 14, 15, I started identifying as an agnostic, even though that's a common misuse of the word. Um, and then I started looking up atheist versus Christian debates on YouTube, and I always found the atheists uh, to do better in those debates and so now I identify as an atheist but it's not like a big part of my identity really. I even tried reading the bible at one point uh, but it seemed too much of a task for something that I wasn't that interested in. But when I'm doing outreach I find my past uh, makes it so that religious people either really listen to what I have to say and quite receptive of it or they were just saying something about their religion as a way to just like close down the conversation and I had no intention of ever listening to me. But anyway, in Christian scriptures, uh, before the fall, the world was perfect. Um, Deuteronomy 32.4 reads, He is the rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Never thought I'd be reading <laughs> Bible quotes on camera. But that means that we can look to before the fall to see what a just world looks like in the eyes of God. And what better a place to do that than Genesis. Genesis 1, 29 through 30 says, Then God said, I give to you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. And so, in a perfect world, according to your way, everybody eats plants. And I often hear people say, yeah, well, Jesus ate fish, and they're referring to the book of Luke, where Jesus is uh, presented a fish because he has nothing to eat. And this is just Jesus accepting a gift. Um, however, the story is told differently in Acts 10, 41. In this version of the story, um, everybody eats and it's not said what everybody is eating. And so it depends what you want to go on. However, even if in this story, Jesus did eat fish, um, the situation that those people were in, in that part of the world, at that point in history, is very drastically different to the situation that anybody watching this video, or I've ever met, finds themselves in today. We all have a supermarket or a local shop within a mile of us, and they all have fruit and vegetable sections. Uh, we all have access to mock meats, if that's up your alley. But back then, the average poor person was much more impoverished than the average working class person in the West today. And so those people would have eaten whatever was available to them at the time. In this case, it was fish. I also often hear, yes, but animals don't have souls. And that's just a pretty lazy argument coming from people who had no intention of ever listening to me in the first place. But the purpose of a soul is to carry a version of you into the afterlife. Um, so it's like you, but a non-material you. It doesn't matter at all if they don't have a soul. Uh, surely that means that they just get this one life. And so we should do everything we can to make this one life that they do have as happy as it can possibly be. It's kind of like a limited edition deal. But when something's limited edition, it doesn't make it less valuable. If anything, it makes it far more valuable. We can also look into how God made us uh, to see what we should be eating. Most people, when they see slaughterhouse footage, find it graphic. You're not even allowed to show it on TV. Um, however, I've not known anybody to get squeamish over seeing somebody pick an apple off a tree. When we look at a tree, we notice that they are lacking something that animals do have. A central nervous system. We use our central nervous system to feel pain, and so do animals. However, there's an entire group of food that doesn't have a central nervous system. There's a whole lot of them. 
plants. That seems to me to be a pretty clear indication that these foods were put here for us to eat since they don't feel pain and they don't fight for their lives. When you see slaughterhouse footage, does that look more like a glimpse into heaven or a glimpse into hell? Surely that amount of suffering would not exist in heaven, it would exist only in hell. And this isn't even to mention any of the health problems that humans get from eating animal products um, in this body that God would have designed for us. It seems to me that if you're Christian, there's an awful lot of indications that God is giving you to be vegan. I think it's important to remember that holy texts were written a long time ago um, for people living in much more impoverished situations than anybody who has watched this is going to find themselves today. But also, Jesus is supposed to be an all-loving figure. Surely, if he was alive today, he would choose to not pay for anybody to be killed. Um, and aren't you supposed to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? And it's not a sin to be vegan. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that you have to eat animals. And so it seems pretty bizarre to me that people would use religious arguments um, at least Christian arguments to try to fight against veganism. Anyway, I think I'll leave that one there. If you agreed with me or you disagreed with me or if I made you see something in a new light, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're more subtle than that, you know, you can leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, this has been a Broke Holy video and I'll talk to you next time.